the American T-28. During World War II, the U.S. Army resisted most efforts to place a heavy tank into operation. The development and mass production of medium tanks were seen as the key to victory, and the concept generally found satisfaction with the field commands. The difficult encounters with the heavy King Tiger and Panther medium tanks in Europe changed some of this policy, but the Army ground forces tended to oppose any tank approaching the 50 to 70 ton range. The Ordnance Department, however, saw a particular need for a special assault tank capable of dealing with fortifications once the Allies had established their armies ashore in France. In September 1943, concept and design work began on a vehicle designed to deal with the expected works of the Westwall, or West Wall, and other conceivable German strongholds. Early concepts called for Use of the new T5E1 105mm cannon that performed very well against armor and reinforced concrete. With frontal armor 203mm thick, the resulting vehicle would require the electric drive installed in the T1E1 heavy tank and T23 medium tank. The Ordnance Department proposed building 25 such vehicles in time for them to be used after the invasion of Europe. Advocating a sizable number of such vehicles in the event that enemy fortifications had to be overcome. The T-28, newly designated as a super heavy tank, made an impressive appearance at this Aberdeen demonstration of October 3. 1946, equipped with the most powerful tank cannon and heaviest armor of any U.S. tank to date, it remained underpowered and arguably undercrewed for men for its intended mission. Gun traverse was 10 degrees right, 11 degrees left. U.S. Army photo. Uh, just a comment. I think the T1E1 heavy tank is the M6 heavy in its uh, nascent form or prototype concept. And uh, I've also heard this referred to as a gun motor carriage, a GMC, as opposed to an HMC, howitzer motor carriage. Army ground forces did not agree and preferred the construction of three pilot vehicles using conventional mechanical drives. In March 1944, the design was approved for five pilot vehicles of the Special Assault Tank, designated Heavy Tank T-28. Among many departures from conventional designs, this tank was designed without a turret in order to lower the height of an otherwise huge vehicle. The positioning of the gun far forward also allowed advantageous use of castings in shaping the hull against penetrations on front and sides. The 105mm gun would have at least 10 degrees of traverse to each side and elevation between plus 20 and minus 5 degrees. A crew of four was considered suitable for the vehicle. Driver and gunner positioned to the left and right of the gun and the vehicle commander behind the gunner. The loader worked in the left rear of the compartment. Only the driver and commander had vision cupolas, and the commanders included a 12.7mm machine gun that required him to stand in an exposed position. This was the only other vehicle weapon. So the... The davits shown on the preceding photo served to handle the unique outboard track suspension set required to reduce the 86.2 metric ton T20's ground pressure from 1.14 to 0 0.82 kilogram by centimeters squared, two squared, number two. 
When not required for all rail transport, the extra set was mated into a trailer configuration. And towed. Side armor consisted consisted of 64 millimeter at 57 degrees on the cast superstructure and 50 millimeters on the lower hull side, are augmented by 102 millimeter skirt armor plates. U.S. Army photo. So here's the uh, the primary hull of the T28, and it has um, the M4A3E8 style trucks, but it has a set of four instead of three. One, two, three, four, and of course the um, the trailer outboard <laughs> also has the uh, M4A3E8 um, gimmick. Of trucks, one, two, three, four. So it's a quite a massive affair with outboard tracks mounted. The T twenty eight seemed relatively square in shape, seven point five meters long without gun and four point five five meters wide, but shrinking to a petite three point fifteen meters with just a single set of tracks. Only the driver and commander had hatches, and the huge shrouded air cooling intakes and exhaust took the remaining space to the rear, supporting the 500 horsepower GAF V8 gasoline engine and torque matic transmission. Photo US Army. It's a good view of the very rectangular vehicle. The gunner had both periscope and telescope type sights. At his position to the left and rear of the gun, the loader also had a vision periscope. With a single loader and heavy separate loading ammunition. A rate of fire of four shots per minute was the maximum expected. See the double tracks. Very thick mantlet. Very thick um, galactus plate. So in uh, real life, I've met one of these at Fort Knox in uh, Kentucky some years ago, and I made a video about it, and I stood next to it, and I uploaded it on YouTube, and somebody was so outraged that they told me that they didn't get much from the video, and they wanted me to remove the video from YouTube. And uh, I said, no, I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to do that. So, you do get some crazy people on the YouTube, but, oh well. Uh, the fact is, I've met one of these, so I think that's worth sharing the data. Because this might not be on exhibit today, on January 15th, 2015. I guess it's at Fort Benning. And I, I don't know if it's on exhibit or not. The T-28 climbs on its transporter. At the October 3, 1946 demonstration, without such support, it could sustain a speed of 11.3 kilometers per hour and on roads travel about 100, 160 kilometers on its 1,514 liters of gasoline. It crossed a 2.9 meter trench, scaled a 0.61 meter obstacle, and could ford 1.19 meters. U.S. Army photo. So... Here's um, the hulking uh, mass of the T-28. There's a guy here guiding it up. And there's the head of the guy driving it right here. <laughs> and there's a guy here spotting. And then there's reporters. There's all these reporters. And then like they're testing recoilless rifles and guns and... Um, mounted, large mounted like guns uh, guns there's a whole array of uh, guns out here, this is a long tom and uh, I don't know 105 millimeter howitzer uh, this thing this is wicked, it's almost like German in its 
conceptual get up. It has like the uh, across setting, uh, stanchion, and uh, j just massive. Looks like it's um, maybe 90 millimeter cannon. And uh, you know, there's um, the football yardage. Haha. <laughs> there's like 91 and 92 tag there. And so it's like they're uh, messing around for the public. Well, I'm rambling. And that's a T28 super heavy tank production.